Good day, strategy gamers, and welcome back to episode 28 of our Let's Play series, War in the East 2, Stalingrad to Berlin scenario. In this episode, we're going to be doing the first half of the ground movement for turn 15, and then in episode 29, we're going to be covering the second half of the ground movement down near the Rostov front. You may note that I've already exited the air planning phase at the beginning of turn 15 here. Um, it just gets so depressing every episode saying, weather's still crap, no flights tonight. Uh, and I think we need to take that extra time that we would have spent simulating the air phase and going over the weather table to actually focus on a lot of the action that we have going on. If you recall from last episode, the Germans pushed back hard down across our front in various areas, and they've moved a lot of their forces around. So I think we're going to have a pretty action-packed two episodes here as we work through all of turn 15. And the episodes have been getting a little longer as some of our decisions become more complicated. So for that reason, we're going to jump right into it up near Leningrad. And right off the bat, we can actually already see that they've moved around some of their forces here. Uh, it's evident that they've pulled back some ground elements because we have now a couple of opportunities like this hex where there's only five, this where there's only six. Um, down here, just north of Lake Ilmen, there's seven, there's four here. So those were not opportunities that have existed to us in the past around Leningrad. My gut tells me they realize that they're now severely on the back foot, and I think they're starting to reallocate forces. And I don't want to jump too far ahead, but doing a complete review of the entire front line, it shows that across the front they continue to reallocate where they are positioning their forces. And we have stressed episode after episode the importance, right, of just pushing through in a small pocket here, breaking their line over there, and forcing them to make tough decisions of where they want their forces to go. This turn is the most evidence I've seen so far of the series of that strategy working. So I'm, I'm over the moon with how well that has been going. So let's start right in with the Leningrad front. And I think that right off the bat, we can say, you know, this is an area where we want to take advantage of. And we may also try to take advantage of this hex over here. So when we look at this stack, we have three rifle divisions, one with combat value two, three, and four. So what we want to do is see if we can't get like the second rifle corps over here to replace the 314th rifle division, right? So let's just move them here. And we're going to bring over the Rifle Corps. And I don't know that we have anywhere else that that would really be a good benefit. That one was still stuck on refit, it looks like. Uh, back here, these are all twos. So I think the best we're going to get is 12 to 6, really 2 to 1. We'll do a quick look to see if there's any support units that can be attached. And we've already got tank brigades assigned. So I don't think there's much opportunity there. I guess we can actually look and see. Yeah, their TOE is looking pretty good. Go back to the second rifle core. Again, looking pretty good. Oh, sorry. Let's click. Yeah, these guys are perfectly fine. So let's maybe take a look at the 198th. And here, there is a separate tank battalion. But these guys really, and this is part of Stavka actually, not the 54th Army, and they're, they're regrouping themselves. So that's fine. We look at the 8th Army with the 10th Rifle Division, and what do we have available? We do have a 1st Rifle Brigade, which might be worth, yeah, we're going to toss the 1st Rifle Brigade into that unit. And now that brings us up to a combat value of 14 here. So we're going to take all of these units, do a deliberate attack, and we should be able to push through here. Not to... I, I always say that, and then we don't push through, and it's just jinxing myself over and over again. But we're going to give it a try. And we were successful. So my um, <laughs> bad luck of continuing to jinx myself has ended there. That's, that's great news. I'm very excited about that. And now we've pushed them through this hex. It's one that we control. This is a key crossroads, right? They're going to have to, again, decide how they plug that hole, 
because one of the forces that was defending there actually routed, right? So although they did not take very severe casualties in terms of numbers, they had the, and actually that's probably not that significant, but the Plateau Cossack, Cossack Regiment, excuse me, routed, and then the Infantry Division, this looks like it's probably just a brigade, uh, also retreated. So managed to push through there, but it also got rid of the fortification level, which was two, which makes any further attack into that hex much easier. Now we can shift our focus back over here to where they have a um, defensive value of five. And I think what we will do in this situation is we're going to move up this rifle division that we had pulled off. And we're going to take just these two stacks, that's all. Actually, if we take these two, that brings us to at least three to one, so we're going to go ahead and attack. And they retreat it. So that was very successful. And now we're going to take this entire stack and move them up on the line. And their defensive value should be plenty to hold off any type of counterattack we have here. We don't quite have good enough odds to try to press the advantage against these units, but that can come next turn. And really, we put ourselves in a great position next turn when these units have rested a little to now say, all right, well, let's focus in on this hex, right? And we just continue that waterfall effect all the way down the line. And now they have to think about how they reinforce this because it's obvious that, again, we'll be able to push through in another hex somewhere along here. Looking further down south near the Leningrad front, we have this opportunity here where an infantry division with a defensive value of just four is sitting there. So I think we're going to take these two units and attack. They route it, which is just always the best of news. And now we're going to take these rifle divisions and move them up. I suppose we can only move up this one here. That's fine. Defensive value remaining is plenty. Plenty. All right. So now this is going to put pressure again. They have to plug this hole somehow. I'm hoping they'll at the very least take one of these infantry divisions, which then it's going to be weak enough that we can push through again. But now let's see. This is going to be kind of one of the more important ones. Let's see if we can push through here. So we're going to be at 16 to 7, which is just about 2 to 1. Oh, sorry, 18 to 7. Let's give this a shot. And they retreat it. Great news. Just all around great news we're going to move a full stack up into that hex now they might have no actually they they won't even have a decent chance of a counter attack and now right look at the terrain look what we forced them to do they now have to defend three hexes right along here as opposed to previously just having to defend these two so now they have to find a way to plug that hole and that's exactly what we're going to try to do south near schminsk um, where we're going to try to break through into this hex and really give them some trouble. To do so, I think we might take like this 28th guard. I think we might swap them out for something a little stronger. Yes, yeah, so we're going to move you back here. And what is the strongest unit we have that can move up there? You're six. You're six. Oh, we got seven here, so let's do the seven, right? Let's move you up. And I'm going to... Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that as is. So this is going to end up being two to one. So it's going to be tough, but they have no fortification level. We really tried to wear them down last turn, but we weren't able to break through. Let's see if we can now break through. And we 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 broke through. Look at how well turn 15 is going. I was so excited for this episode after seeing how the previous one ended um, because this front line all along the front, I, I think we're just going to have a ton of action to cover. This is going to be a very good episode. Let's now see what we can move up into that hex. Ooh, boy. Not seeing too many options there. Surely there must be something we can find that can make it. So the only thing I saw was here, but this actually exhausts the units. Yeah. I don't think we want to do that. 
don't think we want to. We don't have any armor that's been moved up, do we? Okay. Very well. Um, so I think one question that we might find ourselves posed with is, does it make sense to maybe try... I'm wondering if it makes sense to try to push back this unit too. So yeah, let's move this unit back there. We're going to bring up you with the value of 5. It's going to exhaust you, but I, I really want to do it. Yeah, we're going to move you back. And then we have to be careful here, right? So I think... I think what we will do is we're going to move three seventy fifth down here, so then we can move up this two fifteenth. Let's see if there's another one we want to bring up. That's five. Let's see what it looks like if we attack now. It's two to one. Oh boy, I don't know. We have something noticeable down here. Doesn't look like it. All the way down here, just the five, but you're even tough on supply. And none of these guys have enough to move in. So we're gonna attack, we're gonna do it. We push them back. That pretty much secures this for us, right? That was such a big win for us. Because now, look at this. They have to defend one, two, three, four, five hexes. Whereas previously, they only had to defend three. Right? We are just opening up the entire front line here. And now you actually... Oh, shoot. You can move up there. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Look at this. That's great news. And we'll take this rifle division. Because I think it's very important that this hex in particular we keep. We'll take this 253rd rifle division down. And then we'll take the 254th over here. Okay. I don't know if we have another that we can move in. Maybe the 369th? Yeah, okay, you can make it. Let's move you down. Wow, I, I can't believe how well this is going. We have plenty of defensive value to hold out this hex. Same here. This is just going great. Let's make sure we don't leave ourselves open to counterattack. You're a little lighter, but you're going to be fine against that. You're also fine. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Let's see here. <laughs> I think, looking here and wondering, no, we, we have been steadfast in not pushing through here for the sake of supplies, and we're going to maintain that. Right, we're going to keep just enough here that they have to keep the 95th Infantry Division, this 212th Infantry Division, that they have to keep forces here so that way it's just not us easily waltzing across the swamp land. But we're not going to try to have some breakout or something here in these pockets. You know, I say that, but then an idea strikes me of... Does that put such incremental pressure on them of then having to defend all of these? No, we're... We, we have enough success here. We're not going to stretch our supply situation. We're just going to be happy with what we've been able to manage here. We're going to move up this rifle division, I think, though, if we can. I want to at least get you closer to the front, if at all possible. Maybe you are just better off right... We're going to move you up just one. Okay. Those two HQ units are fine. Yeah, I I am feeling very good about how all of this is going. This is all great news. 
continuing down the front line here, I think this might be where we start changing that approach. Now, real quick, let's, let's do a quick little review of what happened near the Adritsa front. So, last turn, our reaction when we got here was, oh no, they've brought in a dozen armored divisions to defend our push towards Adritsa. There's no way we could have broken through it. Like, it was just, this entire front was going to be on a standstill. We, we actually pulled these units back. We had actually occupied this entire line that they're currently occupying because we were so convinced that a counterattack was imminent and that we wouldn't be able to hold them off, right? That was the status last turn. Now look at it. This entire pocket that they've got right here, we have enough to not only push through, but just to obliterate them. Over here, look at these defensive values, 7, 14, 14, 1. We could break through all along this line. Down over here, look at this, 2, 1, 5, 5. We could also break through here in the south. Really, the only area in which they are heavily fortified is with the LAH SS Panzergrenadier Division, which I th actually think they built back up. I think they had separated that out into, like, brigade level. It appears now to be full strength again. And then also this 3rd Mountain Division. Other than those two units, maybe, I'm sorry, maybe you could also claim this 10th Motorized Division. Other than those units, we kind of outclass them all along in this pocket, which is really exciting news for us. So now we have to start being a little calculated in our movements to make sure that we're leveraging our numbers to the best of our ability, right? That's, that's the goal now. And I think one of the first things we're going to do is see if we can't take like this stack right here. Oh, you are high on fatigue though, guys, aren't you? Ooh, I don't know if we want to do that, actually. You're actually looking pretty good. So, let's move all of you up here. Okay. And then... You know what, we are going to push, because there's such an opening in the front line, I want us to push. So we're going to attack here, we've got 3 to 1. Route it, the Rodfar Infantry Regiment and the Infantry Division retreat it. Okay, so great news, right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this stack. Oh shoot, do you not have enough to move there? We're going to take this 46 mechanized, and I'm actually going to pull you off the front here. Because you're just struggling, guys, you, that's, that's what you're doing. We might pull even more off the front line. We're just going to swap them out with these units here. Yeah, so you're high fatigue, so you're going to come back here too. And then the 23rd guard can go up there. Am I missing one? Yeah, I am. But you were high fatigue, so we might leave you as is. Over here. We will take the 178 you here. So let's see now if we take these six and attack. It's two to one. Let's do it. Let's press it. They both retreat it. Great news again. And now what we can do is we're going to take these, this rifle brigade, this rifle division, we're going to move them up. We're also going to bring up this... Ooh, that rifle brigade's hurting too. Do any of you have enough to move in there? I don't think you do. So what, what's our defensive situation here? Pretty much at four. Which means they would have two to one on a counterattack. I think I am going to bring up this brigade. It, it didn't do a whole lot, but it certainly helps. And I'm wondering if we don't actually build these up into a rifle core. And then we're going to take this rifle division and move you up. 
So now we have um, a little bit over eight in terms of a defensive value, which is a much better position against these two stacks. Right? We actually even outnumber them. They don't even have one-to-one -one odds. The following turn, what we can do is we can actually continue up, and I think there's a, I think there's a road there. Yeah, there is a road here that we can follow. So this is, the fact that there's a road here is great news because we can then follow that. And this is all rough terrain right here. We can follow this road kind of in behind their lines towards the treat cell. Right, so that's why it's so important that we do get moved over into this hex in the next turn. And we're putting a lot of pressure on these guys, so this is going to go well. I think we might move up this rifle division um, just to make them think about what we're about to do over here. And we might take the 166 rifle division. Debating taking. No, you don't have enough to go there. I'm trying to think of how we can maybe shuffle units down to help out over there. Oh! Oh, I miss these guys. You're on refit. But let's get you off refit. And let's take you two. Let's move you up here. Yeah. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. That's great news. Defensive value is 4.8. So it should be enough to hold out there. We're going to take up this rifle division, I think. Because you do have enough to move in. Yeah, so that gets us to call it 8. Okay. Yeah, if we had the, the combat prep and the movement points, we could actually probably even press the attack here. We already outnumbered them 3 to 1. So another huge, huge group of victories here. I, I told you guys, we're going to need all the time in these two episodes just to resolve all of the combat we have along our front lines here. Let's take a look and do a quick check. I know up near Leningrad there wasn't any action in the previous turn in terms of counterattacks by the Germans, but yeah, there was none in this entire Atrizia pocket. They just all moved. There was one down here we're just going to look at while we have the menu up near Smolensk where they actually pushed us back. This was that mechanized unit we had that just really tried to get as close as they could to Smolensk to do exactly what they ended up doing, right? They pulled back their entire line in a desperate move to try to defend Smolensk. Look at this up north here. They have abandoned this entire pocket that previously they had defended. Um, so they, they pushed pretty hard using the, what is that, the 41st Panzer Corps. Um, so I mean that is a pretty major battle, 27,000 men versus 16,000, right? We lost 64 armored fighting vehicles, which since it was that mechanized element probably makes sense. Oh, I always hate seeing that, losing three KV-1s. But a lot of them were light tanks and stewards. Stewards pretty equivalent to the T-70, T-60 in terms of their role on the battlefield. Um, so the T-34s lost less of those than we did the light tanks. So that's good news, at least. Back to the action around Idritzia. So here we have a situation with... Right now we have 24 combat value versus their 14. And I'm not certain, so this is light woods. And this is light woods. The difference being there's a rail line and a road going through here. I'm trying to think of where it's gonna be best to press our advantage. If we take these two stacks here, we do have two to one. Hmm, hmm. What I would kind of like to do is to maybe push back both of these units here and push back here, forcing the LAH SS Panzergrenadier Division to pull back, right? If we collapse their right flank and if we collapse their less left flank, they're not going to sit there in a position where they're completely, um, where they can be attacked right from a total of four or five different hexes in the next turn. I don't have too much of an interest in attacking here or here because this is actually rough terrain. And I think it works against us to try to break through here. We have to go through rough terrain, cross this river, go through these woods, and we have to go quite a ways. So if we toggle off our units here, right? This is a gap of, what, 50 uh, miles 
between this rail line and this rail line. Um, and although we don't have all of these repaired and we won't have that one repaired, right? It's just we get a lot further from our supply depots. Let's actually highlight those. Yeah, right here. The more we move over here, the further we get from this supply depot. But if we instead push south right here next to that depot, we don't stretch ourselves quite as much. So what my thought is right now is do we take these two stacks and attack this unit, forcing them back, their left flank of the LAH Panzer Grenadier Division. I think that is what we will do. And I think we're going to take this 28th Rifle Division and we're going to move them back here. And then we're going to take the 8th Guard and move you up. And over here... We could swap out the 943rd for this 397th. I think we will, because this is just so important that we get this right. And actually, we're going to move you here. We're going to take you here. Okay. So now when we take all these units, we're at 48 to 22. Let's do it. This, this is another big one. They have no fortification levels. Let's see how it goes. They retreat it. What a what a victory. 116,000 men versus their 8,000. Of course it was successful. Now we're also going to take this stack and say, all right, let's also push you back. I think we can just do a hasty attack instead of a deliberate. And they route it, which makes sense. 64,000 to 1,600 men, right? And now, can we take the fifth guard? Oh, you don't have enough to move up. Shoot. I think we might have to take one of you off the line. So let's take the ninth, the 943rd Rifle Division and move you over here. And then we're going to take, I think the 5th Guard's back here. And now we can move up that Rifle Brigade right up here we can also move up well can't we move up that rifle brigade no what about you guys do you have anyone who can this mechanized unit can almost make it and this rifle corps can't quite make it okay so the these guys right here might get pushed back in a counterattack in the next turn um i think there's a fairly good chance of it even uh but that's it's gonna be okay we will take the 33rd rifle division we're actually gonna move them over here i think yeah okay don't have anything with enough movement there okay so now look at this just stretching their line i want to point out too well we don't have a great recon because you guys guessed it those blizzards um, I have a hunch, I have a suspicion that along this rail line right here, the, the Germans are actually moving a lot of that armor they had redeployed to the defense of Idritzia to sit there and kind of go, oh my gosh, we have to do something about Smolensk. I have a feeling that's what they're doing right here. So we'll... We'll see probably next turn the impacts to see if suddenly a bunch of panzer divisions show up near Smolensk. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We need to keep going here near Adritzia, right? So I think one of the first things we're going to do is take this stack right here. And we're going to see if we can't have them push back this unit, which then will make it easier to take this entire stack and move into that hex. So let's see if they can do that. They retreat it, so that worked successfully. And now... Ooh, do we even move this tank core? These tank core reinforcements we got in here. I think we're going to take all of the three tank core elements, and I think we're going to move them all the way up here. Right? We're pulling a bit of a German maneuver here by getting in behind them with armored elements. That may have left ourselves in a very precarious position though now that I look at it 
let's move you guys up here for now. So if I actually move... If I move you back... Move you back. Can one of you guys get down here? The 350 second, can you make it? Can't. Shoot. Okay. Well, I think we're going to take the 243rd Rifle Division and attack. They retreat it. Still can't get there. Now we're going to move up the 108th. I, I botched that one there. Can we get this mechanized core over there? Oh, not quite. We can move them up here, but I don't know if I want to do the same thing that I just did with this other unit. Yeah, I think this is going to be enough. So I, I made a mismanagement of the situation, and we probably got too aggressive with our two new tank cores that... If you remember, I sat there saying, oh, yeah, we'll give them time to rest and repair and recuperate after moving over such a great distance, yada, yada, yada. Um, and now what have I done? I've thrown them to the wolves where they're going to get hit hard in the next turn. Boy, that was a mistake on my part. It really was. Oh, but this tank core. Okay, it's something. It's something. Okay, let's just see here real quick. What if we took all of these forces and attacked? Nope, not even close. Can we maybe, like, try to push them back in other areas here? Like, can we take this one away to try to push them back? We route at them. Okay. So that's one less hex we have to worry about. Now it means we can move up this rifle division, I guess. Okay. And then here we're not going to have a chance of breaking through, given their defensive value, which is fine. That's fine. We're going to keep holding the line just like we are over here, because I really don't have an interest in pushing through south right here. I do have an interest here, but not necessarily over here. So we're going to hold the defensive line just as we have for the last 14 turns. This was, I think, the... This might come back to be the biggest mistake that I made in all of it, all of turn 15, but I don't know why I keep jinxing myself by saying things like that, but I think it might be. I'm just looking at the fatigue level on these guys, their low combat prep. In fact, this one only has 30% of fuel supplies left. I, I really worry about it. If they decide to use the LAH SS Panzer Grenadier Division to counterattack here, they they could just rout and crush these three cores, right? Which would be a great victory for them. Um, I think the only thing that would be a positive from that is that they would then probably would not be able to get this Panzer Grenadier Division out before we manage to capture and encircle it. Um, and they, they have a lot of, I mean, <laughs> we're sitting bordered against two of their HQ units, for goodness sake, right? So they, they have a lot of problems here. So maybe I'm worrying too much about this. Just wish I could get units up there to help. Can I maybe attach like rifle brigades to these guys to try to help? There's a tank brigade, there's an anti-tank regiment. Let's at least give them the anti-tank regiments to see if that can help. Add you to, and you know they're really low TOE, but we're going to do the 161st Tank Brigade too. That was the 23rd. Let's take the 20th now. Don't think it's worth adding the AA elements. So, defensive value now. Yeah, we're going to be right around 12, I think. 12 versus 
30, 36, 40. So they'll have 3 to 1 odds if they want to do it. But if they do it, we might be able to catch out this Panzer Grenadier Division. It's going to be interesting. What We're going to move up our artillery to... Oh, actually, I think the artillery helped us in that previous attack, if I remember correctly. We can take a look here. Was it this one? Yeah, the 6th Artillery Division. Wait, did I read that right? The 6th Artillery Division has a tank brigade attached to it? No. I misread something. Okay. So, night and day difference near Adritzia compared to um, last turn. That's good news. I've already mentioned this entire front, we're going to keep it just as it is. But then up here, I, I think we have to move up, right? It just... It makes sense that we're going to move some of these units up. And I even say we're going to we're going to use this 145th to try to push this unit back. Yep. Managed to do that successfully. So now let's think about how we want to advance on Smolensk. Right? So one of the first things that I think I care about is if we can push back this unit here with this 5th Guards. They held. Okay, that's not terribly surprising. Let's try it again here with the 9th Tank Corps. They held again. Okay. Let's bring up this cavalry unit and attack. Okay, they retreat at that time. And then we're going to take these two tank cores moved up here. And we're going to attack again. No. There's no way. Really? Two to one again? Can't do it. Okay. What if we take the eighth guard get up there? It can't. Let's take the third mechanized and attack. They held? Who are these people? My goodness. Okay. So that did not go to plan. It, at all. Um, so let's take this stack here, move them over here. And then let's take this 8th Guards here. And let's now see if we can't push back these guys. They held again. Maybe I got too excited at the beginning of the episode of how well things were going. I don't think we have enough to attack there. Yeah. Okay. So now it's get reinforcements to the front line situation. Let's take you two units here. Maybe you can push through. Okay, so at least that was successful. Can the mechanized get there? Ooh. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to push right behind their lines. Look at that. We're going to bring that mechanized unit up there, too. And I don't think we have enough to pull back. This cavalry unit can make it up to here. Do we have another cavalry unit? I don't think so. 7th tank guard knight. It can... Let's take the 10th tank core, maybe? Move them up here. I think that makes sense. Right? Yeah. So one of the keys here really is just to try to, to as much as possible encircle Smolensk before they bring down their reinforcements from the Adritsa front. Right? It's going to be a lot easier to hold some of these hexes than it will be to try to take it from them. That's the whole philosophy here. 
So it is being very aggressive, but I feel like it's a necessity almost. I'm gonna move you up here too. So now we should have plenty to be able to hold out in that hex. Actually. Let's do it. Let's do it. No? What's missing? Oops. Get rid of that. Combat delay? Is that what it is? And first mechanized? No. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take you guys, move you there, and move the artillery up. You can come up to here. Same with you. If we take all four of you, you should have enough to break through. Yep, so they retreat it. And then we can take you guys and push through here. They retreat it. We're gonna move up this stack here. Those are two HQ units. We're gonna move them up. We don't have any depots there yet, okay. I think we'll take you up to here. Yeah, that eighth guards can go here or here, which is gonna be more beneficial. I think it'll be more beneficial to um to put pressure on Smolensk than it will be over here. The six guard. Let's do a bit of the sideways shuffle, right? We're gonna take this rifle brigade, move them here. Take the third guards here. We're gonna take this entire stack and attack. Three to one odds. Push them back successfully. Now we move in that rifle brigade. And if we can, as many of these units as possible. All right. Going, going, good. Gonna take this entire element and try to push through here, three to one. They retreat it. We'll take the tank core and move them up. And then we'll take that rifle division and move them up. And this rifle division. Now if we take all of you, you and you and you, let's push this HQ unit, two to one. We got it. And the depot. Now that is a victory. Look at this. They're, they're completely collapsing all along here. I can't believe this. this. Look at all of these gray hexes that we've taken on this front and pushed towards Smolensk. This is fantastic news. Absolutely fantastic. I think we're going to take this rifle division. We can't really get you up there. I think I'm going to move you here, and we're going to just try to route this unit. Okay, which we did. Just one less thing we need to worry about them kind of counterattacking with, right? And then I think we're going to move the rest of these elements this way. Let's take you out, you there. The rest of the 41st Army, I think we're going to have you come and put pressure on Smolensk from this side of things. I think that makes sense, right? So you're going to come in this wedge in between. You may not have a whole lot of success, but we're going to give it a try. Rifle Brigade can go up there. And also move the 17th Guards up. And these two units come up here. Actually, um, how are you doing? Oof. 
that's not good. Yeah. So we're going to unassign the 49th Tank Brigade from you. And... Oops, sorry. Why does it keep doing that? Yeah. Let's see. So, I think what we're actually going to do is just put them to refit status on the HQ. But on that note, I think we need to look at moving the HQ. No, we're, we're probably okay leaving that HQ there. 41st Army, though, you need to move up. You're too far away. 41st Army HQ will move up. And then I think we're also going to take you here. We're going to change you to refit status, too, because the 360 seconds in a similar situation where it's just, look at that TOE. It's awful. Okay. So there's that. They're in refit. They can sit there for a while. Um, so we're going to be able to push in the coming turns in between this pocket here to the west of Smolensk. We've already pushed through to the east of Smolensk. Um, somehow, <laughs> somehow this one unit held how many attacks did it hold off against? Two and then four there? Who are you? Because you guys are heroes for them. This infantry division is down to just 4,000 men. Incredible. There's no fortification level there either. They're just, they're heroes uh, to, the, to the German army. Obviously, we've encircled these guys, so that should make it a little easier in the coming turns to finish them off. I don't think we need to move the artillery there. That rifle brigade, we will move you up, I think, to this unit. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. So that addresses the immediate concerns around Smolensk, uh, which has been a smashing success, as has the rest of our front line. We're going to continue on down the front line for another five or ten minutes, then we're going to call the episode to a close. And then in episode 29, we're just going to have an incredible amount of, of ground battles to also go over in that episode. So this is not ending anytime soon. Along this front here, we already see opportunities where we can push through in some of these hexes. So I think what I will do is take this stack and I'll have them attack here, which is two to one. They retreat it. And then I'm going to take these two rifle divisions and I'm going to move you through. And this unit, 6.7. No, that should be enough to hold that hex because I don't envision these guys counterattacking next turn, right? I, I don't think that's in the cards for them. And then what that's going to enable us to do is, can we actually even take these three in it now? But next turn we'll be able to put pressure here. For now what we will do is take these units here. No, hold on and take these two stacks and attack. Three to one odd should be fine, they retreat it. And then what we're gonna do is move up 290th Rifle Division. And then we're gonna take these two tank elements and actually push in behind, right? There we go. I like how that turned out. And we can even take the 15th tank core and have them meet up with those elements. Good. And let's see if there's not any support units we can assign here. Tank brigade, I don't think that's necessarily what they're going to need. I was hoping for maybe like a, I don't know, a ski unit or something like that. Anyways, 
we're going to take the 48th guard and move them here just to maintain the line. Right, we have plenty of defensive value here. Now we have some here. Um, yeah. We'll also move up this 344th rifle division. And right here we have defensive value 10. That's plenty. Wow, this is going shockingly well. Shockingly well. There are still a little too dug in here, but I don't think that'll last long as we continue to expand and expose their front. Up here we can push through in this hex, I'm fairly certain. So if we take these three units, uh, that's only two to one. I think we've had those odds for a while, but we haven't, how would you say, taken the bait. Um, we're going to move these guys off, refit, and bring them up here. But now we're at three to one. Yeah, so I think that was the decisive factor now that we have that unit there. They retreat it. Good news. Good news, Charlie Brown. We're going to move up this rifle division. And then we will move this third volunteer here. And I don't envision this Luftwaffe field division trying to press in behind our lines. So we're going to leave that empty. That should not be a problem. Defensive value then in this hex is plenty for any type of counterattack they may have. And right here, I think we'll actually see if we can't. Yeah, that's three to one, so let's push them there. They retreat it. Good. The geek's getting a little high on some of those guys, but now, now these guys really have to make a decision. Are they really going to hold that one pocket? I don't think they will. Which then will open up things nicely for us in the following turn. I bet they're going to pull back and reassemble a new front line here. We have some mechanized elements here along this front, so we're just gonna hold tight. They did push through in a row, so let's take a look here. In the previous turn, the German forces cut through our line here, and they also, I think we had moved up into this X and they pushed us back. Yeah. So they attacked with twice their twice our number with the 13 core, these two infantry divisions. They are successful. Over here, we first held off an attack from the 7th Panzer, which I assume... Actually, I shouldn't assume, because there's multiple Panzer units here. Which Panzer unit is the 7th? Yeah, that's the 7th Panzer. So the first attack was with the 7th Panzer. We managed to hold, and look at that, 142 armored fighting vehicles attacked us there. On the second turn, they had the 7th Panzer and two infantry divisions join the attack, and it was simply too much for our forces. They outnumbered us again two to one. Um, so the two rifle divisions did end up retreating. Now, I don't necessarily have an interest in trying to counterattack them here. Um, and we see that we have defensive value that is equal to their combat value in this hex. We're going to leave that just as it is. Over here, let's see actually. I think we're going to leave all of those guys there because they actually, if they want it to press, they could push through here. And I think that will change now as we move up and, and put pressure on their rear. So I think we have to look at taking these um, formerly Moscow defense units. Let's first just get them off the train, right? That's step one. have any more further up nope so we got them off the train and now we're going to have them be the reinforcements that come up here so let's take this entire stack and we're just going to plop them right here three full strength rifle divisions move to the front line there we go and let's see too because we have two panzer elements on each side Let's see if we can't attach an anti-tank regiment to each of these rifle divisions. Uh, there we go. And the last one, the 172nd. Going to attach the 130th anti-tank. Excellent. So now they have a lot to contend with, with three infantry divisions having freshly been brought in to help reinforce that line. Over here, 
we again we I mean we have more units that we can bring up to the front. I think we'll bring up this rifle division and we'll bring up 43rd rifle division. And let's see if we attack with these two hexes. That's three to one, so we're gonna push them back. Good news there. Don't quite have enough to make it there. Don't know if we want to, if we even can push into that hex. Looks like we can. Question is, will we? I don't think we will. I think we're going to now take these units and attack here. Three to one. So that was successful. And then I want to just take some of these rifle divisions and use them to reinforce our entire front line here. That's what we're going to do. Right. And then you will all make up the rear element as you're a little further behind. There we go. So we've pushed them back here. We've retaken this hex um, here on the outskirts excuse me, of Arel. We continue to have a very solid defensive position. I think we might take the ninth guards and use them to just counterattack here like we had done the previous turn. Yep, so that routed the SS Cavalry Division. One less unit they have to throw at us on the front line. Then I think in the next turn, what we'll do is, now that we have these Moscow Defense Units pulled up to the front, we'll then try to take them and see, okay, how can we... How can we use them to try to encircle Arel and... and bring our force of numbers to the front. I also think we're going to have less pressure from like the 7th Panzer unit and this Netherlands SS Infantry Regiment because I think as we get in behind them here, these mechanized units will look to retreat. I think they will look to retreat as we get in behind them. So that'll be, that should alleviate the situation. Now we also had a situation where because we brought these Moscow defense units to the 3rd Army, we ended up with 35 units under command when really 18 value is what they're capable of. So I'm going to take this entire stack here. I'm going to assign them to the 61st Army. And then I'm going to take... Um, yeah, I'm going to take this and these two and assign them to the 48th Army. So then it's kind of splitting... Uh, the responsibility of all these Moscow defense units. So, okay, we're here. I've already forgotten what that is. Is that the 61st? I think it's the 61st. Let's double check though. Yep, 61st. I should be able to remember that for more than 10 seconds, yet I proved to be incapable of doing so. Yep, so move you up to the 61st Army. And 61st. Then over here, we want to move you guys to the 48th Army. You, 48th Army, 48th Army, and we'll take you two to the 48th Army. Okay, so now when we look at the 3rd Army, it's only 23 to 18. It's a much better situation. Not great, but better. Um, yeah, so there we go. Next turn should be very exciting around a route. And everyone, this, this has been such an amazing episode. I'm even more excited for the next episode as we finish out turn 15 because we have so much work to go over down here near Rostov. It's continued encirclement, the rescuing of our now cut-off division, their breakthroughs that they had along our front, Add it to all of that, the armies that we are moving from Stalingrad over to the Idritsa front. We have so much still to do in the next episode, so I can't wait for you guys to join me in that. Thanks, as always, for giving the video and the series a watch. Should you have any questions, comments, or feedback for the video or the game, please leave them in the comments section, and I will do my best to address them. And with that, have yourselves a great day, strategy gamers. Bye now.